Hi and welcome to the sew along for the cape. This is a knit garment so you're going to need a stretch fabric and I'm going to sew this with an overlocker. Make sure you have four threads of colour threaded in your machine. We're going to use a 6mm quarter inch seam allowance and you're going to need to find a way of doing the hems on this garment. So I'm going to hem using a plain sewing machine. You can use a twin needle for your hems or a cover seamer if you have it. So this garment would be best in a firmer type of knit fabric. I'm sewing the blue in. It's a nylon blend. It's the same sort of fabric you'd expect to find in a polo shirt, so it's a heavier weight knit. Um, you could also use sweatshirting, fleece, French terry should be alright, I haven't tested it, um, maybe a tad light, but you'll need to use your judgement. The main thing is we need some horizontal stretch in this. This is just so we can get the neck band on. The alternative you can do is to use the neck band in a more stretchy fabric, such as a ribbing or something like a cotton lycra blend. Um, the main thing is you need to be able to stretch this over the head. So all those details are in the information sheet on the pattern. The other thing is versions A and C are identical. Um, one has a hood and one has a neck band. The difference between A and B is that A has a, um, a faux button placket. So this is the piece here. So you're going to need a small piece of fuse just to help reinforce under that button area to help you sew the buttons on. So the buttons are sewn on, we don't need button holes um, and it's quite straightforward. So uh, let's just get started and tackle it as we go. So if you're sewing version B, just skip this step. The very first thing we need to do is apply the fuse to the button reinforcing areas. Um, just choose the fuse that is recommended for your fabric type. You can get a stretch knit fuse. Um, you could just use a woven fuse um, because it really is just for reinforcing. As long as you make sure the heat, pressure and time sets that fuse properly and it's properly bonded to your fabric, you'll be fine. And we're only using a very small amount too. So, to get started, apply the fuse with your iron to the wrong side of this piece and what we're going to do now is just overlock this curve edge so the outside curve around here and down and that's just to seal the edge we can leave this edge here free for the time being now in theory you only need three threads of overlocking thread for this but I'm just going to leave four in because it's easier All right. and repeat for the other piece. So now let's work on our front. This is what our centre front piece looks like and there's a notch in the centre here. Now if we come down the sides you'll see various matching points to mark as we go. But what we're looking for at this stage are the drill holes. So I've marked the top of the drill hole, um, the centre of the drill hole with a pin, so you can see it here in white, the white head. So these are our openings for our arms, our hands to go through. So for now what we need to do is overlock that edge there so we can stitch it down. So when you look at the drill hole, we want to overlock from around about 2 inches, so 5 centimetres above, to 5 centimetres below on that raw edge and we're not cutting anything out off as we go, so we're not cutting any fabric off, we're just going to trim um, the fraying edges and just tidy it up. We're going to do this on both sides of the front. And just follow that curve up as you overlock and make sure you don't run over these pins. That's if you're using them. We 
Okay, so we've overlocked the arm openings on the center front, and now we need to do exactly the same thing for the side fronts. So the side fronts look like this, and these drill holes are in the same position. So we need to do exactly the same thing for both of the side fronts. Just overlock secure that edge from around about two inches, five centimeters above the drill to below it. Okay, so take the side front here, and this is the right side front as if I was wearing it. When we look down this inside edge, we'll see a notch here, and then there's also a notch that you may have of um, overlocked over, but you should see it through the overlocking here. What we're going to do is take one of our button reinforcements, and matching the curve, we need to place it behind like this. So those notches, notches show us the beginning and end of our button placement. So what you need to do is place it like this. So we want um, effectively wrong sides together at this point. So when you have that, hold that in place with the pin. That'll just reinforce um, the buttonhole sew so area. If you need to, you can tack stitch that in, um, just in from the edge, maybe three mils, an eighth of an inch. But you should find it will be all right just holding that with pins for the time being. So uh, that's the right side as if we were wearing it. And do the same thing for the left side. So this is the left side as if I'm wearing it. Here's the top notch and here's bottom notch here. So I want to make sure that this is wrong sides together and match that position there. Right, so now we're going to sew the center front to the side fronts. Right, so take your center front and place it right side up and take your side front and place it right side down and match the arm openings. Now it's going to seem counterintuitive, but we want the piece that folds out like that because that piece is where our arms are going to match. So if we come down the side and we match notches, just pin that so you can see. So we have a notch to match here at the top of the button wrap and then there's a notch there at the button reinforcement position there. But what you will see is um, that overlocked area matches very nicely and that's what we're looking for there. And then just go ahead and pin it. Don't worry about that um, button reinforcement, uh, don't worry about that armhole opening. Just match the lower part and hold that into place. So we have to sew an outside curve to an inside curve. As I said, it's going to feel a bit strange, but that's what we need to do to get that in the correct place. So you can go ahead and stitch this um, with a plain sewer and then the overlocker if you want. I'll just go ahead and start with the overlocker. Um, we'll use our plain sewer in just a moment. So starting at the neck edge, match that area like so. And there'll be a bit of a triangular bit that pops up. We want this to match at the sew point, which is six mil quarter of inch in. So just start that off. And that'll just hold that in place. Now we're going to overlock down, matching those notches as we go. And make sure you take out those pins because you do not want to smash a needle. And just go slowly.
Okay, so I'm coming to the end of that button reinforcement area and what I'm going to do now is just overlock a little way past it and then I'm going to overlock off. So now I'm going to leave the area for the hand opening free and come down to the other end and you'll see the drill hole position there and you'll see where we've overlocked past it um, around about five centimeters two inches so just come to the end of where you've overlocked off it so we want to go over maybe um, half an inch of the end of that overlocking just to make sure we've doubled up and to the hemline so what we're going to do now is go to our plain sewer and we're going to reinforce the seam at the beginning and end of that hand opening. But we'll go ahead and overlock in the other side first. But I'll show you what we've done. So on the left side as you're wearing it, what we've done is we've just pushed in this seam here. So we'll be sewing the buttons on through here. So do the same thing on the other side. Takes a little bit to get your head around. Alright, so come to your plain sewing machine, make sure you have a ball needle in it, um, check your tensions, lengthen your stitch length from normal, and if you're using a domestic sewing machine, you're going to want to be using either the lightning bolt stitch or um, a zigzag stitch, but don't make it too wide because, um, or you'll see as we go. So just use whatever's recommended for your machine in the manual. So we're going to reinforce the top and the bottom of our hand openings. So what we're going to do is come to this area here where you've popped in that um, button reinforcement and we want to start stitching just on the edge of our overlocking. So back tack a couple of stitches just to secure that. Right. So now you can see the position of the drill hole by my pin head here. What we want to do is keep sewing directly to that pinhole position and we want to make sure that those seams are directly on top of each other so our drill holes are on top of each other. Then we want to sew one centimeter, three eighths of an inch past it. Now when we've done that there should be two centimeters which is three quarters of an inch between that position there and that position there. So we want to leave an even three quarters of an inch, two centimeters on the way down. So just sew towards that drill hole and then sew past it approximately one centimeter, three eighths of an inch. And that should leave you two centimeters, three quarters of an inch here. If it's only one and a half centimeters, which I think is nine six eighths, I'll have to check that. One and nine six eighths. I'll check that. Um, don't worry about it too much. As long as the opening is even all the way down, we're going to do exactly the same thing at the other end. Come to a centimetre before, three eighths of an inch, back tack, and then sew down until that stitching is right on the edge of our overlocking, and back tack to secure. So what we're going to do now is go to our iron and press that open nice and flat on both sides. But what I'll do is I will just do the same thing on the other side first. So this is my lower edge on the other side. I'm just going to match that there. I'm 
starting to stitch here just before our overlocking separates. Okay, so go to your iron and press those seams nice and evenly open. Now, in theory, when you press this um, seam here, the seam should face towards the back, so towards the shoulder area. But what's going to happen is because of that button reinforcement, it's not going to want to. So you just go ahead and do whatever your fabric um, is tending to do. Mine wants to push in, so I'm just going to go with it, just to do with the thickness. I'm not going to fight it. I would rather have the garment look right. So what we're going to do now is reinforce the armhole opening here. So you can see it's pressed open. I'm going to start approximately, it's approximately um, one centimetre above. Now you've got plenty of room here. You can stitch this on the outside of um, where your overlocking sits in if you want. You could use a decorative thread if you want to. The main thing is that we reinforce this area and we hold it open. So I'm just going to stitch mine one centimetre, three eighths of an inch from all of the edges. So I'm going to start above here, go down one centimetre, three eighths of an inch and across and around the bottom and back up to the same position on the other side. You just choose what's appropriate for you. And you can do this from the back of the garment if you prefer. stop with a needle down in my work, lift the press of foot, turn and pivot, so there's the opening there, stitch across, do the same thing, and up the other side. I'm at my original point and I'm just going to back tack to finish that off. And what I'll do is I'll repress that just to make sure it sits nice and flat and then I'll repeat it on the other side. So now we're going to work on the view B front. Now view B we're going to treat slightly different from view A. Firstly we don't have buttons and secondly we have a centre front opening. So here is my centre front piece. We're cutting a pair. So I've cut one out this way and one out this way and some people call it a mirror. Um, the other thing I'd like to say is the fabric I'm working with now is a knit but it has very, very minimal stretch. There's maybe 30% in it. Um, so I've rethought this pattern through and I think um, you could probably get away with a sweat shooting fleece as long as it had 30% horizontal stretch. Um, it will go over the head. So we'll move on from that. Right, so take your front piece and what we want to do is overlock each side of the center front. So the long straight edge from the hem all the way through to the neckline. Now, 
Now we're going to treat the side of the centre front the same as we did for view A. So what we're going to do is locate our drill hole position and we're going to overlock secure the edge from 5 centimetres to inch, 2 inches above it all the way down to the same position at the other end, so 5 centimetres 2 inches below. Now here are our side fronts, which we're also going to treat the same as view A. So we've cut a pair, one out this way, one out that way, so two mirrors. So locate your drill hole and we're going to overlock 5 centimetres 2 inches above to the same position down below and we're going to overlock each edge separately. Now we're going back to work on our centre front piece again. So place your centre fronts right sides together and we're going to sew a seam down the very centre front which is the long straight edge. So if you'll see at the top edge there's a notch, so that notch is marked at one and a half centimetres. We're going to stitch from that notch in a straight line all the, all the way down to the drill hole. So use the stitch guides on your faceplate. Remember to back tack at the beginning and end. So here is my drill hole marked. The drill holes are marked at one centimetre which is three eighths of an inch. So when you get to that drill hole continue stitching beyond it for one centimetre three eighths of an inch and then back tack off. Now I need you to go to your iron and press that seam open all the way down through the centre front and you'll see it notch at the bottom edge here to help show you the turn position to press that. So when you've pressed that and the pressing width is one and a half centimetres which is nine sixteenths of an inch this is what it should look like. Right, so come back to your overlocker and place the centre front right side up and then we're going to sew in the side front. So we're looking for this piece here and right sides together we need to match the neckline like so. So we are going to overlock down and for this view we don't have to worry about inserting that button reinforcing area. Now there are notches to match as you go and you are sewing an outside curve to an inside curve. Now you only need to overlock these together as far as your previous overlocking ends. So as soon as those overlocking side seam points join, you can just overlock off. So that means you'll probably overlap the original overlocking on those sides by um, maybe one centimetre, three eighths of an inch. So when you've done that at the top, come to the bottom and match that extension for the armhole. We're going to do the same thing at the bottom end. So where our um, overlocking joins. just to overlock those two pieces together, overlapping it by around about one centimetre, three eighths of an inch. And now do exactly the same thing on the other side.
Right, so come back to your plane sewing machine and locate the position of the drill hole here and I've shown you where it is with the pin head. So what we want to do is reinforce the opening of the armhole pocket. So making sure those drill holes are on top of each other. Come to the area above where you overlocked and do a couple of back tack stitches just on the very edge of the overlocking. We want to continue the line down towards the drill hole. So I'm maybe, um, I'm maybe an inch above where my overlocking separates. So making sure everything is nice and even, just stitch a straight line directly down towards that drill hole position. When you reach that drill hole, that should be two centimeters, three quarters of an inch from this overlocked raw edge. You want to stitch through the drill hole and one centimeter, three eighths of an inch past it. And then back tack it to secure. Now come down to the other end and locate the other drill hole. So my drill hole is here. So same thing, we should be two centimeters from the needle position to the outside overlocked edge, and we should, which is three quarters of an inch, and we should be one centimeter, three eighths of an inch above it. So I'm going to start stitching here, back tack, and then I'm going to continue this line in a straight line until it meets up with the edge of my overlocking, which will be around about an inch past where it joins. So when you've done that, we're going to press that open like so. But the first thing we need to do is go ahead and repeat that on the other side. So when you press this, make sure the seam at the top presses towards the side seam and we want this area here where the armhole is open and at the bottom we want this to press towards the side seam as well. So now we're going to top stitch those seams to secure them. I'm going to use um, heavy denim thread. What I've done is I've lengthened my stitch length to, it's around about four and a half to get a nice chunky look. I've loosened off my top tension, so I've played with my tensions and I've put a really heavy duty needle in here. Now you can just use a normal stitch to do this. Either way you're going to need to hold the seams down, so you can just use regular thread, but I thought this would be a nice effect. Now I've allowed quite a lot of room if you do want to run this as a top stitching effect. You're going to need to stitch this from around about one to one and a half centimeters from the seam at the center front. So that's three eighths of an inch to nine sixteenths of an inch. But you can just choose whatever width you feel is appropriate. I'm going to run mine around about one centimeter, three eighths of an inch. So we're going to start at the neck at the center front on one side and stitch down. Now I'm going to repeat this on the other side. So now we need to do this at the seams where our arm openings are. So it's a slightly different scenario at the seam because we've pushed the seam on this side on this side here, I'm going to stitch around about 5mm, quarter of an inch. It'll be just under, it's so that we still stitch through the bulk of the fabric with the overlocking underneath. I'm just going to use my presser foot as a guide. Okay. 
Now for this other side I'm only stitching directly through the fabric, there's no seam underneath to stitch through. So now let's repeat that on the other side seam. Okay, so now we're going to do the side seam. So place your back and front right sides together. So this is my front and I'm going to take my back and match the necklines and place it right sides together. So there we go, we've got the back at the back and the front at the front. So we're going to sew from the shoulder here down to the side and we'll come back and we'll do the same seam on the other side. There are notches to match as you go. So now we're going to move on to the hood. If you're not sewing a hood, just jump through this section and um, I'll show you how to do the neck band. So take your hood pieces, which will look like this, and the cutters appear, which is some people call two mirrors. So there's one this way and one this way. Place them right sides together and we're going to overlock them together. We're going to overlock this long curve here, which is the center back head. So now if you have a cover stitcher, um, you'll see two notches here. So the first notch is the turn position for our hem. So what you'd be doing is turning at that notch and cover seaming that down. So a one inch, two and a half centimeter hem has been allowed for. What I'm going to do is overlock and plain stitch. So what I'll do is open this up and I'm going to overlock secure that long edge. to go to my iron and press in a two and a half centimeter one inch hem. So I'm back at my plain sewer and what I'm going to do is just stitch through the overlocking line to secure that um, seam into place. So now we have another notch down the bottom which is at 2 centimeters, and you'll see it just in from the edge there. So 2 centimeters is 3 quarters of an inch. So I'd like you to place the hood right side up and what we want to do is place the right over the left and match those notches together like so. And when you've matched them just tack stitch those layers together and you want to make sure you're tack stitching them within the seam allowance of 6mm, so around about 3mm or an eighth of an inch. So 
we're just going to hold that into place and we can see our hood starting to take shape now. Right, so I've decided to sew my hood and my neckband in together to have both. You can do one, both, either, whatever you want. So take your neckband and fold it right sides together and overlock these short ends. Now what we're going to do is fold this so that we have wrong sides together or right sides out. Now to make it easier for me to put in, I'm going to go to my plain sewer and tack stitch these two edges together just in from the seam allowance, so it's going to be just under an eighth of an inch or around about two millimetres in from the edge just to hold that and help me put it in properly. Okay, so this is my neck band held into place. Now let's just have a look at it for a second. So the seam here is going to be our centre back neck. And when we come around either side, you're going to see a notch. So that notch needs to match to our shoulder seam. And then there's one on the other side as well. And when you look directly opposite this centre back seam, you'll see a notch here. And that's going to match to our centre front. Right, so take your neck band and find that seam and place it inside and you'll see the double notches and you want that seam to sit on top of the double notches, well in the center of it. And then the notch I mentioned before will match to the shoulder seam here and we want that seam to face towards the back. Now you, when you overlock this into place you will need to stretch it. There's the other notch which will match to the centre front there. So as long as those positions are set you'll be fine and all you're going to do is gently stretch this into place as you sew. Now if you're sewing the hood, take your hood and it's right side out and place that inside the garment like so. And the centre back seam will match to the centre of the double notches at the back. And the notch we matched here at the front, well, at the two centimetre mark, will match to the centre front notch there. Now just be aware when you overlock through here they will be bulk, so just take it slowly. And then you will have a notch to one side of the centre back which will match two the side seam there and the notch on the other side will match to the side seam there and those seams face towards the back and then you'll just overlock that into position making sure all the raw edges are together. Okay so here is my collar and my, my neck band and my hood all in place. So if you are going to do both, just make sure you get them in the right order. So you want the um, hood under and then the neck band on top. But a lot of you won't be um, sewing both of them. Um, I just think it looks quite nice when you're wearing it to have the band and then the hood over the top. Up to you. Alright, so now let's move on. To sew this collar, we cut the piece out on the fold, so what we're going to do is overlock together, right sides together, this long straight edge. That's our centre back neck. Now we're going to fold it in half, matching that seam we've just sewn so that we have wrong sides together. Just go around and make sure the notches match. Right, so let's just look at this for a moment. We have the centre back seam, which is our centre back neck, 
And then on either side of this we have notches and they're going to match to our shoulder seam we've just sewn. And then directly opposite the centre back we have a centre front, the centre front notch, and that's going to sew to the centre front of our cape. So take your cape and we want it so that it is wrong sides out and we want the back at the back and the front at the front. So place the collar inside so we have right sides together like so. Next we want to make sure that the centre back seams are on top of each other and we are going to match that to the notch at the centre back of our garment. And hold that in place with a pin and then we're going to match the notches at the shoulder seam shoulder seam and we want those shoulder seams to face towards the back and then we want to match the center front notches to the center front seam on our garment and when you've done that we'll just overlock that into place if you need to ease anything in at all, make sure that those points match and any stretching should be done between the points. Take your time and make sure all the raw edges line up. I'm going to start overlocking this from a shoulder. Well, we're almost at the end, so what we need to do now is the hems. So if you're cover stitching, cover stitch the hem into place and you'll see a notch at the hem turn position. I'm going to overlock and plain stitch my hem, so I'll overlock, press and then plain stitch into place. When you start overlocking, just make sure you start from side seam. Okay, so I've pressed that hem up at two and a half centimetres, which is one inch, and you'll see there's notches to show you that press turn position. Um, I'm going to stitch this from the right side. I did ease in that curve as I went. It just might help me control any um, tunnelling I might have. For B view hem, I'm going to overlock secure the bottom edge, I'm going to turn it up by an inch, which is two and a half centimetres, and then I'm going to use my top stitching thread to stitch the hem into place. So for my hem, I'm going to run two lines of top stitching. So I'm going to trim my overlocking thread back to an inch, which is two and a half centimetres. I'm going to tuck that inside 
the tail inside before I turn this up. So I'm just going to follow my stitch guides here. Now my back tacking is going to be a lot more obvious um, with the white thread. So I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to go very slowly as well. So the last thing you'll need to decide on is where to place your buttons. So the button reinforcing wrap is here and I've put suggested positions in it, on it I mean, and just evenly space your buttons out. Now I've suggested a, um, a size on the information sheet which is I believe 28 millimeters. You don't have to go with that, you could go smaller, just use your judgment if you want more. Just make sure they're evenly spaced and they do go on the side piece not on the front piece here. So there we are, our garment is finished. Go ahead and give it a final press, trim, trim any stray threads off and um, enjoy. So thanks very much for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you again soon.